So good to know you're there. So good to know it's time for today's business. With me, David Babarike. I hope your day is going on just as planned. Uh, like we always say, always advise. Take responsibility for your health and that of your loved ones. Wear a face mask. Uh, maintain physical distancing and wash your hands regularly to avoid contracting COVID-19. What are we looking at on the show today? Our focus on today's show will be... Um, around the VAT controversy, the VAT controversy between the federal government and uh, uh, some state governments. We'll be having a PWC, yes, Tawo Idele from PWC will do justice to that conversation. But before then, let's take a look at some stories making the rounds in the world of business. Yes, Nigeria's best bank, the Central Bank of Nigeria says it, will, it is worried about uh, boosting dollar supply on the currency market and not uh, devaluation of an era. The bank's director of monetary policy, Hassan Mahmoud, said these on Tuesday. The Naira hit a record low of 532 Naira to the US dollars in the parallel market uh, dollar on Monday and um, has remained so through Tuesday with dollars had to come by following the central bank's recent actions to channel demand from the unofficial market where the Naira is trading at much lower levels. Now, uh, according to him, I quote, I said, we are not really bothered much about devaluation. What we are worried about is the supply side and the confidence in the system, Mahmoud told a virtual investors conf I mean, conference. Nigeria's battling dollar shortages brought on by low oil prices following disruptions linked to the COVID-19 pandemic. The central bank has devalued the currency three times since March 2020, but the Naira has continued to weaken. Now, the African Development Bank and its development partners have announced plans to mobilize over $520 million to co-finance the first phase of the Nigeria Special Agro-Industrial Processing Zone, SAPZ. Now, the Director General of Nigerian Country Department, AFDB, Lamin Barrow, said the program, which will be implemented in phases across six geopolitical zones in Nigeria, would also be rolled out in 18 other African countries. The Nigerian uh, program consists of four mutually reinforcing components, uh, infrastructure development and agro-industrial ops, management, uh, agricultural productivity and production, policy and institutional development and program coordination and management. And now talking insurance, what the Lagos State Government has said, it is set to enroll all its workforce under insurance coverage, which will include a group life and group personal accident policies. The State Governor, Babaji Sawolu, disclosed these at the ongoing 47th African Insurance Organization Conference in Lagos. According to the Governor, it says to achieve this partnership uh, with over 150 insurance broker companies, uh, which will serve as intermediaries to over 20 insurance firms to provide end-to-end -end risk management uh, services for all classes of insurance in the state has been established. The governor, who was represented by the Commissioner for Finance, Lagos State, Rabiu Olo, said that the NSAS protest was a test. He says, and I quote, he says, we are grateful to insurance for taking responsibility and it proves that insurance is working in Nigeria. Now, in line with his efforts to depend uh, deep in rather deep in knowledge of integrated personal payroll information system, the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation has begun a training workshop for role players in the uh, southwest region of the country. Speaking at the opening ceremony, representative of the Accountant General says the program so far has been a success in other region, regions of the Federation. We have started with just six MDA, ministries, departments and agencies. And as at that time, uh, from there up to this very moment, today we now have over, uh, we now have about 711 ministry departments and agencies on the platform of IPPIS. Out of a thousand uh, MDAs we have. So the essence of the training is again to deepen the knowledge of the role players, to know their specific roles and uh, issues and challenges they normally face, how to address them so that they don't have to be coming all the way to uh, Abuja every now and then. They have issue of variation, they have issue of, uh, of uh, minor issues that could be handled within those uh, ministries and departments and agencies. 
And speaking further, he says uh, the essence of the payroll system is to decentralize the payment system, which will bring about a better efficiency and accountability. Uh, the, the IPPI has been decentralized. Each ministry, department, and agencies uh, can address quite a number of the issues that they currently bring to Abuja. Uh, there are no-go areas, like I did mention in the speech of the AGF, uh, that was, a, that was the mention, that the no-go no -go areas are issue of an MDA to change the, the employment date of, uh, of an employee. No, it's not going to, it's not part of the, it's a one of the no-go areas. Changing the bad date of an employee is a no-go area. But there are other issues that can be something issue of uh, variation, issue of uh, suspending a staff uh, who has uh, disciplinary action and all that, it can be addressed. Issue of changing bank account of, uh, of, uh, of an employee, it can be uh, addressed. It's an issue of uh, changing, uh, I mean, bringing in deductions in respect of cooperative society, other forms of uh, deductions that are local to that particular ministry, department and agency can now be handled locally within that. All right. Um, the Nigerian government has been asked to continue in its efforts to curb a rather incoming rise in insecurity in Nigeria as it has become a huge disincentive for investors. Speaking at the 2021 Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry Security Meets Business Dialogue, it is believed that creating employment for the teeming unemployed youths will be the way to go. We urge the government to sustain the needed funding for defense operations to equip the military with advanced weaponry and intelligence infrastructure. These should be supported by heavy deployment of modern military intelligence technologies. The result of the high level of unemployment and poverty amongst Nigerians, especially the youth, who may be adversely attracted to crimes, failure to address challenges of poverty unemployment and business failure is one of the factors fueling insecurity in the country. It's employment, employment, employment. It is economy. It is making jobs available. It is not magic. We must have a new strategy of building that bridge, not always by public uh, announcement, but by private. The dialogue got the attention of security personnel as they took turns to highlight a few of their achievements, but for the Lagos State Commissioner of Police who doled out some security tips. Every one attack you hear about, the military had, and other civilians had crushed probably 15, 16, 17 of them, probably because the air of one. But of course, the 17 crushed does not make news. What makes news is the one single incident that is that is that is successful. So we continue to re-strategize, we we'll continue to re-energize, we we'll continue to restructure, we we'll continue to rearrange ourselves in such a way that we're able to deliver peace and security to Nigerians. Not in the very far distance I'm talking of now. Coming in the, in the coming weeks and months as we approach our work with more diligence and a sense of responsibility. Between January and July this year, the Navy has so far arrested just 2,119 91 bags of smuggled rice, an indication that smuggling is no longer as it used to be with the presence of Navy more now at sea and in all the choke points or entry points into our nation. This effort has helped in protecting the local rice production industry while also protecting the society against health hazards, associated health hazards. The Navy has thus to reduce the impact of crude oil theft on, on the mainstay of Nigeria's economy while encouraging investors in the sector. The sources to come with recording facilities and surveillance. This should also cover at least 100 meters to the perimeters of the organization. So the world trained experienced guys to mount objects rather than engaging anybody that has no school experience or training because of cheap labor. Be cautious of colleagues who may exploit your relationship to gain unauthorized access to information within so your domain. Never leave valuables in your reception exposed or unattended to. Avoid huge, huge cash transactions. Use theater, most cases, or online transfer where necessary. 
do not discuss financial matters in open places and not even in the car. So, or uh, within the hearing of the domestic staff. All right, um, just in case you just joined us, you're watching today's business. It's that time where we go on a break. But before then, let me let you know that when we return, we'll be speaking with Taiwo Yedele, who is a senior partner, uh, tax partner with uh, uh, Pricewaterhouse Cooper. That will be after we return from, from the break. And the focus will be on the VAT controversy that is ongoing at the moment. So stay with us. It's still today's business. Yes, it's no longer news that the Federal High Court in Port Harcourt has ruled that states and not the Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, should be collecting value-added tax and the personal income tax. Now, following this milestone ruling, the Lagos State Government has rightly expressed its readiness to begin the collection of VAT in accordance with the judgment. Now, already... The River State Governor, Yesom Wike, had signed into law the bill that authorizes the state to collect VAT on its part. Lagos State Government has alerted all the stakeholders involved in the payment and receipt of VAT of its determination to ex explicitly enforce the verdict. Now, this development comes with some implications for the nation's economy. Now, helping us make some sense from this conversation is um, Taiwo Oyedele, an African tax leader with Price Waterhouse Cooper. So good to have you join us on the program, Taiwo. Yes, Taiwo, um, quickly, tell me, tell me. You need to unmute your device if you can hear me because I really can't hear you. You need to unmute your device from your system. Okay, I really still can't hear you. I hope um, uh, we could deal with this as quickly as possible. Um, is your device unmuted, Tawo? Okay, check if your mic is running, um, Tawo, uh, so that we can, we can have this conversation as quickly as possible. But before then, let's take a look at this story while we try uh, and um, perfect um, Tawo Edelism. Um, device. Yes, uh, the Lagos State Government says improving the quality of products by artisans and efficiency of tradesmen in critical, is critical to ensuring ease of doing business. Governor of the state, Obajide Somolu, says integrating technology in the lowest cradle of businesses is critical if the state is to meet the Sustainable Development Goals 8. Our correspondent, Wilson Omoni, was there. Take a listen. Goal 8 of the Sustainable Development Goal identifies decent work and economic growth as critical to advancing a society. The Lagos State Government is keen to improve the capacity of its artisans as it is graduating 2,000 of them here, having undergone an eighth week training in various capacities and competencies. Uh, I left school over 20 years ago, but when I started to continue, I know much. We learn high city, you see, a lot of things that I don't know into computer. I so much gain it. You see, a lot. We, we learn a lot. How to communicate with our customers, then how to deal with them, then how to perform according to the work I do. I am an engagement consultant. It us on safety. Safety really matters a lot in our business. I intend to see that those who come for this um, training do well in their business because it's not a one-off thing. For the state government, absolute knowledge and technology is a hindrance to the ability of small-scale businesses to expand and become employers of labor. You are giving them the equipment on which they are trained. And our expectation, therefore, is we expect them to train more artisans. One of our greatest obstacles is our inability to empower most of the gra gra graduate students, graduating students, members that are trained from last year. We want to use this opportunity to seek for a favor that if not all, at least 50% of the labor state projects should be given to weed artisans in Lagos State. 
Governor Abadjide Saolu is in a jubilant mood and this reflects in his words. He is delighted the traders and artisans are embracing the future, which he says will attract business from outside of the state. Technology and innovation are the bedrock of economic development across the world. And it is setting no doubt that Lagos continues to take the first step in that line. The transition of human society from the old agricultural age to a new industrial age, now to a digital age, has brought about a new wave of innovation and emerged from the old destructive ways. And we can certainly see that being placed here today. The governor has given three hectares of land for the creation of an artisan hub in Badagri to further create an industry for the small traders. Will Sinomoni, Sir. Right, if you just join us, you're still watching today's business. While we await uh, a connection with our way delay for this interesting conversation around them, the VAT controversy, uh, we'll take a break and then we'll come back shortly. Stay with us. All right, welcome back. Yes, I'm aware we have Taiwo Edele now. Yes, Taiwo, tell me, all of this that is happening, are you surprised? How complicated is this issue right now? Yeah, um, hopefully you can hear me now. Um, the issues are complicated, and they don't need to be complicated. That's the sad part of it. Um, so I think it's always good to ask a question about uh, fiscal federalism, whether what we are doing is right, is in line with the constitution. So, you know, for that, I commend River State. But the speed and the rush for us to enact laws in the different states gives me a lot of concern because at the end of the day, we have to think about what is in the best interest of the country as a whole, what is in the best interest of the sub-national, what is the best interest of the federal government, and more importantly, what's in the best interest of the people including small businesses and the vulnerable people. When you create uncertainty as to who to pay tax to, when you create uncertainty about when and who and how, uh, it doesn't help with the tax system, it doesn't help with the ease of doing business. So this is really my concern as we speak. I'm hoping that all concerned people, including the judiciary, including the executive, uh, including NEC, uh, including FEC, would make this a priority. If the judiciary, for example, can give us accelerated hearing over the next few days, um, all the way to the Supreme Court, then that provides clarity so that in terms of implementation, we can then agree as the people, how do we implement? Or if we decide uh, that what the court has said is not what we want, then we can go back to the constitution. There's a process ongoing now to rewrite what we want in terms of VAT. It's disappointing that the whole constitution has nothing to say about VAT, uh, despite this being one of the most important taxes that we have in Nigeria. You are not a lawyer, but I know you are a tax expert. Now that the state governments are beginning to enact um, legislation um, around um, VAT collection, uh, do you think um, that um, the National Assembly can wade into this at this point in time? Yeah, I think, um, you know, all stakeholders need to wade in. Uh, the National Economic Council, the Federal Executive Council, the National Assembly, uh, the Conference of uh, Speakers uh, for all the states across Nigeria. Uh, I think even the business community. We need to wade in. And wading in is to say, let's take a step back and do what is good for our country. This is a task that we have collected for 28 years. Waiting for six months, for example, will not change anything. It's not something to do in a hurry. You enact a law within 10 days. What if you now get to the appeal and the decision is overturned, right? What if you get to the Supreme Court and you get a different judgment or outcome? So I think, you know, the process of waiting to build capacity, to have engagement with stakeholders is extremely important because rushing to do a law 
uh, is, a, is a guaranteed recipe for creating chaos and making even more mistakes. As we're beginning to see already, uh, some of the states, uh, including the draft law for Lagos State and River State, are saying they want to Im Im impose a VAT on imports, whereas import is an exclusive legislative item that is not within the purview of the states. Interesting, Tao. Uh, let's let's look at um, how all of these would play out. Eh? Uh, and the impact is already having on businesses. I'm, I'm sure September 20, businesses are, are meant to begin to file in their, their tax returns. And this, uh, th there is no clarity as to which way to go in this regard. Yeah, no, maybe the, the good news is that uh, the filing of, of VAT is due on the 21st of every month. So by the 21st of this month, uh, you'll be filing uh, your VAT returns with respect to transactions that took place in August. Uh, as of August, uh, even though uh, River State had a law or they had not commenced the implementation of the law, Lagos State does not even have a law as of yet. Other states have not introduced their own laws. In other words, for the business community uh, and taxpayers, the, the VAT they have collected for August should be, be remitted to the FRS as of the 21st of this month, because you cannot remit VAT to a state that had no law under which framework would you have collected. So in a way, you maintain the status quo. Now, for the laws that are being enacted now, um, the filing of the returns will be due by the 21st of October. If you count from today, that gives us you know, somewhere around 40-something you know, days. So I'm thinking and hoping that in these 40 something days that we have as a country, we must address this issue and get some finality so that we can provide certainty to the Nigerian people. This whole conversation, Tower, we need to have a win-win situation here, a win-win for the federal, the state, and maybe the local government inclusive. Um, some quarters say uh, this move is in line with the call for true fiscal federalism, uh, where some states are, are gaining or probably enjoying where they did not so. Uh, what's your perception of this conversation? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a very valid concern uh, in terms of is there fairness and equity in the way that we share VAT revenue? The answer is that uh, there's no equity, there's no fairness. Only 20% of the VAT revenue is shared based on derivation. 80% is shared based on you know, population and equality. So that's why you find some states feel like they're generating more than they are getting, and some other states are generating next to nothing and they're getting something reasonable every month. So that conversation for me is the cross of this conversation, of these issues, and that is what we should be seeking to address, not creating more confusion. And I like that you mentioned the local government level. So what we have seen now is River State said they will keep 70% of what they collect. They will give local government 30%. Uh, Lagos State said they will keep 75% and give local government 25%. Now, in both states, the local government are currently getting far more than 50% of what the state is getting. So you can see that even the state already, by design, are trying to do to local government what they said that the federal government was doing to them. So this is why you need to take a step back and do some analysis. At the end of the day, the reality is that as of last year, federal government collected about 60% of the VAT revenue and only took 15%. So overall, federal government is actually giving to state more uh, than they are taking from the VAT pool. And this is not a conversation we should start looking at from about, it is from South versus North. No, we have many countries, uh, I said many countries, have, we have states in the South that are also not generating uh, VAT revenue, the same way that we have in the North. Uh, the same way we also have those in the North that are generating uh, you know, a lot of VAT revenue. So we should make this a national conversation and just move away from all the sentiments uh, that is not allowing us to focus on the main issue so we can address the problem from its roots and, and cure this problem once and for all. Tell so maybe a win-win situation for me here will be the states that are generating so much should get, should get so much as well. Maybe that should be the conversation for fairness and equity. Yeah, indeed. I agree with you 120%. So uh, we have enough data today, this is 2021, to be able to tell how much VAT revenue we are generating from each of the states. 
And my recommendation is that whatever you generate from a state, give it to that state 100%, less cost of collection, which I think is about 4%. So what you are going to be sharing should be only what is collected by the federal government at the ports, uh, on international services, on intellectual property, and also on federal government contracts. So those, those collections relating to you know, things that uh, you know, unite us together uh, are the things you should be sharing. Whatever is collected from a particular state you know, should be paid to the state 100%. That way, you have fiscal federalism that we are clamoring for without creating confusion in the system of having to deal with about 37 tax authorities. Taro, this for me will be an ongoing conversation. How time flies when you're having a lovely time. Taro, thank you for your time Please. on today's business. Thank you for the insight and thoughts on the VAT controversy that is ongoing. Thank you so very much. Thank you for having me. Okay, that's about how much we can take on today's business. Uh, wish we had more time. Should there be a longer conversation with Tao or your delivery, then that's the way it is right now. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, God willing, we'll do this again next time. From all of us here, do have yourself a beautiful uh, business day. Bye for now.